Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. If you had tuned into Wednesday's video, you would have seen some of my preferred materials for what I would call standard filtration. And by standard filtration, I mean these are the kinds of materials that go inside a hob, a box filter, canister filter, trickle filter, under gravel filter, and if you just consider sponges, a sponge filter. And standard filtration means it takes the end products of a fish's metabolism, or the snails, or whatever else is in your aquarium, gathers it into a specific place and uses beneficial bacteria to break that all down and goes through the nitrogen cycle and the end product is nitrate. And this particular video we're going to deal with what do I do now? Uh, I have built nitrate building up, it is an end product and there are a number of different ways of dealing with it so it doesn't build up to a point where it is going to interfere with uh, healthier fish, their metabolism and all that other stuff. So the easiest, and might as well get out of the way right away, uh, we'll have dealing with nitrate is to do a water change. Now, it is labor intensive, of course. You have to actually do it. Uh, I have a system set up here in my fish room where I don't have to lift any buckets, which is nice, uh, but you still have something you have to pay attention to and uh, take care of. I have set up systems in the past uh, for clients that don't require water changes. They do require top-ups and Believe it or not, I've, well, I've managed to get away for, for quite a few years without having to do a water change, but I actually don't like uh, zero water changes. I don't like that system because, uh, first off, uh, you need to have a little bit of experience to work with it properly because there are other metabolites in your aquarium, not just nitrate, that can accumulate. And if you're not um, used to looking for those sorts of things uh, by various species of algae that are growing and that sort of thing, uh, you can have those accumulate and it can again interfere with the growth and happiness of your fish. So I actually prefer even in the systems that I use to do some small partial water changes which will get rid of those metabolites. Of course you can uh, get rid of a lot of those colored organic molecules using carbon uh, but a water change is a simple way of doing that. So let's get on to some of the more complicated ways of dealing with nitrate. And again, it also does deal with some of those other organic molecules, so uh, we'll cover those as we go along too. Now, I've had a lot of people ask why I don't do anoxic filtration. And, well, there's two ways of doing anoxic filtration, and I've done them both. Uh, one is you can have a separate canister. Uh, it has to be a sealed unit because it can't have access to oxygen. You set up layers of material in there, and in time it'll set up a point where it will as the bacteria chew on the various things, they use up the oxygen as the water passes through them and it gets to the point where there is no oxygen left so they have to take the oxygen off of nitrate and use that as their oxygen source and then uh, it ends up you know, bubbling off nitrogen gas. It is uh, a useful way of getting rid of uh, nitrogen, sorry nitrate, uh, but the problem I found with them is regulating uh, the amount of flow that goes through them and being certain that of course that you are actually removing uh, the nitrate. You can do it uh, but it is not uh, my preferred way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to get to my preferred and actually it should be pretty obvious what my preferred method is here because you're going to looking at it uh, but we're, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of uh, anoxic filtration. I'm going to dump it in with uh, the other uh, version of doing that, and that is deep bed filtration. Now, a lot of people uh, like deep bed filtration. It has its benefits. Uh, you end up with a large layer of uh, material on the bottom of the tank, which, again, supplies just enough flow through it that uh, by the time the well, nutrient-laden water gets deep enough into the bed, uh, again, it has run out of oxygen, so it uses the oxygen off of nitrate. Same, same thing as anoxic filtration, uh, but instead of having to worry about uh, regulating that, it sets itself up. You just have to um, you know, layer the materials, uh, plant the plants, and then let it do its own thing. My thing against it is, I mean, I have done them before, you have certain restrictions on certain fish you can't put in. Anything that digs is a problem. And then uh, you do need those plants in there, so anything that does eat plants is also a problem. So you have to be careful of that as well. Uh, like I said, they work. Well, actually, one other thing I want to mention while uh, I'm thinking about it is 
it also requires that you give up uh, you know the bottom few inches at least of your tank space and if you don't have large aquariums that also can be an issue as well so as you can see let's get on to why uh, what I do and why I prefer doing it now these are my high humidity planters and also I have done a new version of the leak proof canister filter as well same kind of concept and what I'm doing instead of doing anoxic or deep bed filtration I am using plants to be the other end of the nitrogen cycle so in other words they're going to take the nitrate out of the water and also uh, nitrite and ammonia they they're not preferred feeders really they'll eat all of them and as the water uh, percolates through the bed of this uh, they will uh, pretty much eat all of it I don't want it to go down to zero uh, I prefer having a little bit of that nitrogen left uh, I somewhere around five as much as maybe ten parts per million is fine by me uh, it does keep everything nice and healthy and happy. Uh, I don't find it any kind of deterrent to the fish at all. There are a few species, of course, that require a much cleaner system, but that just simply means using more plants. It's not a big deal. I don't have to fertilize any of this. I don't. I don't use any fertilizers. I just use the fish, and then you see as the plants are all nice and healthy, uh, it's not a problem at all. And I grow with this style... I think currently a little over 10 species of plants so uh, it's not exactly just as you see here uh, java fern and java moss the nice thing i like about these is the tank itself as you've seen in my videos if you just check into any of the sunday vlogs uh, there's nothing in the aquarium itself that requires uh, the filtration it doesn't uh, interfere with you keep whatever fish you want if they dig not a problem because all of that um, anti-nitrate uh, filtration is up out of the way where they can't get at it and if you have fish that eat plants uh, like goldfish that uh, grow a few of those uh, for some clients uh, they can't eat the plants because they're not there and one of the other nice things I find about this style is it is a nice refugium there's shrimp in here there's uh, scuds and a whole pile of other microorganisms and of course as their population builds up uh, they will go down the lift stack and into the aquarium and they supply a nice little snack for the fish so these are the things that come together for me that make uh, this style of uh, the other end of the filtration system it makes it much nicer for me because this is something that doesn't require a whole lot of cleaning the first one I set up uh, was now a little over <sighs> I might be wrong on this, but I think it was about three years ago, and I just cleaned it just because I wanted to check it out. It was still working perfectly fine. Actually, sorry, that was the second one that I set up. The first one I still haven't cleaned. I'm not going to because I want to see how long it will go. And it has a whole pile of fish in there, and it's nice and crowded and full, and everything's growing perfectly well in it. And I haven't had any issues, so I want to see how long that goes. Uh, the second one I cleaned up because I was putting... A, a different fish in it I wanted to uh, before I uh, set those fish in I want to make sure everything is perfectly fine for them uh, as it turns out it didn't really need to be cleaned uh, but when I cleaned it and reset it it didn't actually uh, destroy the filtration system of it because I don't like I didn't pull the plants out I just gave it a quick rinse and uh, got rid of some of the detritus it actually if anything probably improved its efficiency a little bit with a little bit extra water flow Again, uh, these are just my preferences for how uh, I like to do my filtration. Uh, obviously, everyone's going to have their own opinions on these things, and I know lots of people have used deep bread and have no problem with that. Anoxic is a little bit more specialized. I don't think there's probably too many of you guys out there doing that. Uh, I know there are people on YouTube who do it, and more power to them. That's just not uh, my preferred method. This is something that is stable. Uh, natural and I don't have to worry about it which is a whole pile of positive as far as I'm concerned and uh, even aside from the refugium aspect and the fact that the fish can't eat the plants or disturb it at all uh, and also from again my perspective I think it looks nice and that's an additive so there you go now the nice thing about the what I do here is I really enjoy getting your comments uh, tell me your experiences with what you do uh, spread it all around let everybody know and uh, it also does help generate uh, new videos 
uh, I did this one specifically because of uh, Wednesday's video because it is the natural uh, it is the natural uh, next step uh, getting rid of the nitrate and keeping your water nice and clear for your fish uh, this is it this is uh, what you need to do water changes uh, anoxic filtration uh, deep bed filtration or as I prefer this here so thank you very much for taking your time to watch what I do uh, leave comments as always, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.